Hi there, so today is going to be the final um, revision lesson specifically for statistics. We've done all the mechanics ones we need to do. After half term, there'll be a couple more um, pure ones, and then we'll start looking at some exam style practice. Right, uh, before we do all of that though, um, I don't know how, how you found yesterday's battleships thing, but I thought I'd show, show you a little train tracks problem today that you may or may not want to have a crack at. Actually two problems for today, so you can always take a screenshot of this and print it off if you want to have a go, or just copy it out on a grid. Rules for this one is um, a block of two squares contains the digits one and two, a block of three squares, one, two, three, and so on. No digit appears in neighbouring squares or even diagonally. Um, so there we go. So we've got five blocks here. So one, two, three and five are going to have to go in here somewhere. And I know that one cannot be there, there or there. So one must go there. So that's how I would start that one off. And then the train tracks. Um, I know that there must be one piece of train track in here you can only have straight train track or train track that turns 90 degrees i've already got one two three in this row and i know there's four so the only thing that the train track can do going in here is go straight through if it turned it would produce a fifth so i know that that bit there is going to be it now to solve these i normally use a bit of pencil because sometimes it can get a bit tricky to think it through but if you can do it without that would be awesome i will show you my solutions for these next time or at least one of them right so here we go pause the video and, and see if you can do this what we're looking at is binomial distribution being used to test a hypothesis now you can only do this if four things are in place. One is that you have a set number of trials. In this case, it's 20. The second is that every trial has the same probability, has an equal probability which it does it's landing on it uh, it's a five-sided spinner so we're seeing whether or not it's biased so we're if it's not biased it would be one fifth or 0 0.2 wouldn't it the third one is that every trial is independent of all the others so what happens one spin doesn't affect any of the others and the fourth thing is there can only be two results that we are considering. Either we've got so only two results, and in this case that means five or not. So it's either something happens or something doesn't. Right, so in this case uh, that's what we've got. So we can set this up as a binomial distribution um, using so saying that we've got 20 trials and our probability is 0 0.2 so because 0 0.2 is what we've got we should always state a null hypothesis which is written as HO and then probability is equal to 0 0.2 because that's what that says now this student thinks it's biased towards landing on a five so his alternate hypothesis will be that it's greater than 0 0.2 which means we'll have a single tailed test you get a double tailed test when you're just saying it's not that which means it could be more than or less than so now we've got that um, because we want 5% um, significance, uh, that also has uh, the, uh, the alpha symbol for that saying that the significance is 5%, so that would be 0 0.05. Another thing we could say is that the expected mean would be what you get 
uh, 0.2 times the number of trials 0.2 times 20 is 1 fifth of 20 is 4 and we could use that before doing anything else always really good practice to do a sketch that have to but a really good idea so it's between 0 and 20 um, number of fives we could get the expected mean is 4 so that's going to be about there so I could my sketch of what my distribution is going to look like will be something like that um, and what we're it's saying that it's actually when he's tried out his um, spinner it's landed on a five ten times which is considerably more than you would expect so that's about there would be 10 and what we want to know is is this region here does that add up to more than a probability of five percent so is that going to be bigger than five percent is it going to be bigger than zero point zero five that's what we're trying to work out and then all we've got to do is grab the calculator and get it to the right function so we're going menu statistics then we're going distribution binomial and use the cumulative one and we are wanting it to be more 10 or more aren't we so the lowest possible result number would be 10 but we do want to include all the ones that are more than that because um, they they will also have their own probabilities to add in so we're going up to 20 we've got 20 trials and the probability oh it's already on 0 0.2 comes up quite a lot 0 0.2 um and that's giving us that now before we can consider it we want to change it out of um standard form so we can say the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10 is 0 0.00259 which is actually that would be 1% isn't it so it's uh, way smaller than 5% chance that it's in there now as it's less than a 5% chance that it's in there that means it's it's less likely than five percent so we can say um, there is sufficient evidence and it's important to say at the five percent significance level to reject the null hypothesis and suggest that the spinner is biased towards fives something like that that's definitely more than enough okay here's a similar one except that it's going to be at the other end of the tail that you're thinking about so pause the video and give this one a go and i'm just going to lay out my working and talk through this one quickly because we've got a third example that i would like to spend more time on So you should have this basic information down first of all. So it's a binomial distribution, 20 tests. Uh, it's a one in three chance. The null hypothesis is that it's a one in three chance someone supports this particular team. Uh, probably Norwich, I would say. Quite a lot of Norwich fans out there. Um, and Nigel thinks there's less in his school. So that's the alternate hypothesis. Um, and 10% which is 0 0.1 is what we're thinking about now I've done the expected mean as well is being 6 and 2 thirds because 1 third of 20 is 6 and 2 thirds 
So if we make a little thing from 0 to 20, 6 and 2 thirds would be about there. So that's your mean. And it's going to be doing something like that. And we're wanting to know um, whether or not if three of them support it, is that going to be less than 0 0.1 if it's um, less than 0 0.1 that would support his claim if it's more um, if it's more than 10 percent then that would um, that would that would go along with the null hypothesis that um, it, it, it's fine we would expect it to happen so popping it into the calculator uh, is just a case of going back there again and this time we want the lowest possible to be zero because it's a, uh, a right end tail and three to be the most results that we could have the probability I wanted to show you this because the probability you can put in one third exactly if you hit one and then after you press one press the fractions button and it will give you this old-fashioned way of cut for calculators of putting a fraction in one third press execute and you get 0 0.0604 and that is less than 10 percent so because it's less than 10 percent we can reject the null hypothesis and um, so there's enough evidence to suggest that the team is less popular at Nigel's school at the 10 percent significance level and you should have a sentence that looks something like that one right so quite a big question this uh, this is just the first part as well so Write it down, pause the video, and have a go. So we've got our binomial, ex binomial distribution for 20 trials, 0 0.15. Expected mean is 3. So if I do a little sketch from 0 to 20, 3 is right up this end for what we would expect it to be. And what we want to know is... 10% significance, the probability of rejection of each two-tailed test they've asked for should be as close to 0 0.05 as possible. So they do, what they don't need to tell you is that it needs to be 0 0.05, but because they're saying it needs to be as close to 0 0.05 as possible, it doesn't matter which side of the line you fall. If they hadn't said that, it would have to be um, less, just less than 5% on each one, but it could be just over, depending on which one's closest. So let's just put in a little sketch here for what we're looking at. We are looking at something like that. So this is 0 0.05, as close as possible. And this is as close as possible to 0 0.05. And we're going to have to experiment with our calculators to get as close as we can. Sorry about that noise. Two, um, that, so if we start at, at this end here, I know that three is the most likely thing. So I'm thinking this is pretty unlikely. So I'm going to go with my lower. I'm going to go for the probability that x is smaller than or equal to one and see what we get there. So the lower is zero. The higher is one. We're still doing 20 trials but our probability has changed to 0 0.15 and that is 0 0.1755 well that's 17.5% too high so that only gives me one place to go at this end and that's whether or not 0 is inside the region or whether or not that's too likely to happen as well because it could be so I'm going for my upper being zero, and that has got a probability of 0 0.3800. Uh, 
uh, to four decimal places eight. So that is less than 5%, but closer to 5% than that one. So at this end of the um, thing, my critical region is going to be zero. So critical region x equals zero but we're also going to have an upper end for our region so where might that be i'm going to start with well quite a bit more shall we go with um 10 first of all so if i just go back here and i say my lowest one is 10 my upper one is 20 and that is still very, very low. 0 0.0002 is, is way too small, isn't it? So too small, I would think. I should be able to get closer than that. So maybe we go for 8 and see what 8 gives us because that was very much too small. So just change that one to 8. Execute a couple of times. 0 0.0059. That's still some way too small, um, but it's quite a big jump. So I'm going to go to 7 and see. That's giving me 0 0.0219. So that's just over 2%. So we're getting somewhere close now. So let's try 6. And that's giving me six seven three which is too much but that is closer that's the closest to five percent isn't it so that means that six is going to be in our critical region so the rest of our um, critical region is going to be bigger than or equal to to six so the critical regions x equals zero and or x is bigger than or equal to six next question find the actual significance level of a test based on your critical region from part a so all this is saying pause it and have a go all this is saying is what's the probability for what you've got so i've used that which was three percent wasn't it zero three eight eight and i'm going and i've also used this one so this is nearly four percent this one is nearly seven percent so it looks like we're going to be close to ten percent uh, so if i add zero point zero six seven three so they're both to four decimal places which is what they like um I just add those together I get 0 0.1061 so I can say it's 10.61 percent or 10.6 to three significant figures. Hasina finds that eight of the sample trees have the leaf disease. Comment on this finding. What do you think for that? Well, if we look back, 8 is inside our critical region. It's up here. So we can say um, 8 is within the critical region. So there is sufficient evidence at the 10% significance level and that is important to say that because it doesn't necessarily mean it's totally true um, to support Sina's belief and what was her belief um, 
yeah, that weather conditions have affected the population. And that's all you have to say. You only have to say that it's affected it because this was a test for, for more or less. Actually, it's affected it in a more so way, hasn't it? But anyway, what I'd like you to do now is have a look at the Mass Genie um, worksheet and particularly the latter questions, questions four to seven. If you can do those, then I'm happy with that. If you find they're too tricky, go back to question one and go from there and let me know how you've got on and upload your evidence to me. Thank you very much. Cheerio. Have a lovely half term, everybody.